Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and with Godot 4 on the horizon, one of the major new features in Godot 4, beyond, you know, the new Vulkan render, the new light mapping, and all the other things that are in there, is an update to GDScript. George, I think it's Marquez or Marquise, has been working on, um, updating GDScript with a number of other contributors, and today we're going to look at some of those things in what has kind of been unofficially dubbed as GDScript 2.0. So we're going to look at the top new features to expect in GDScript uh, in the Godot 4.0 release, and I'm going to go ahead and create a project, and we're going to showcase some of these to you. Now, obviously, in order to do this, I need to be running Godot 4, and I got to admit, on Windows at least, Godot 4 is kind of a crash-tastic mess right now, so we may have a couple of crashes during this video. I just have to warn you about that straight up, such as the uh, uh, there we go. All right, we're loaded in. So we're just going to start out. We're going to create a very simple 2D scene. And the first thing I'm going to show you is delegates. Delegates are a nice feature in every programming language, sometimes known as anonymous functions. We're going to go ahead and create a button. So the hardest button to button. All right, there we go. So let's create our button right there. We will give it some text. Click me, sucker. All right, there we go. So there is our button. And now we are going to do is add some logic to our... Um, our node here, actually we're gonna save our scene as well. So we'll save this as our sample scene. Sure, node 2D, that's a great name for a scene. So now we've got our button here. I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna attach a script to our world. Yeah, we'll call it node2d.gd. And we're gonna showcase some of the new functionality. So, all right, we're gonna basically get rid of all the commenting. So one thing you're gonna notice, we've got comment folding. That's definitely a nice thing. Uh, it's not really part of the language, but it's from the language. So, all right, so we're gonna sit here and we'll get rid of all that. All right, so here is our uh, empty canvas to work from. And the first thing I'm gonna show you is the new anonymous functions feature. And this is um, pretty straightforward. So we got our button in the scene, and now inside of Ready, we're gonna wire up to the button. So there's a couple of things that happen here. This is illustrating a few of the new things. First off, signals and callables, which basically are functions, are now objects in the world. So you can pass them as parameters. Also, no more of this weird string mapping stuff. So before it used to be string on button down, you would connect it to a, uh, a named event and then provide the logic. Now it's actually, uh, thanks to the addition of lambdas, what we can now do is go button down like so, and we'll do a connect. And then I'm just gonna create, so here we're creating a lambda function. So it's a type function and you could give it a parameter like so. We don't need a parameter in this case. And now we'll do the body of our function. And all we're gonna do is here. So pressed button sucker. All right. So there is, that is a Lambda. That's how Lambdas look. Uh, pretty straightforward in how this works. We'll go ahead and we will run this. So yep, select node and we'll run our example. And hopefully we won't crash. Cause like I said, Godot 4 is currently under development and is a little bit crashy. Also for some reason, it orientates weird on Windows. So we click that, and as you see, press button sucker. You also notice we've got now got all this filtering options here. Again, that's nothing necessarily to do with uh, GDScript, but you can toggle errors, warnings, etc. off. Uh, so you see here, we now have this new Lambda functionality. Now, the cool thing is there's a couple of ways of doing this. This is a way of doing kind of an inline. So if you're doing things like handling events, which obviously, as you can see, you can now pass functions to variables, which also makes this work. Uh, but we can also do something like this. So we're gonna go ahead and say, bar on button up equals function. So we're creating our own Lambda function here. So it can be uh, button was released, sucker. All right, so there you can see, you can name one uh, accordingly. It's closed off, that should be proper syntax. And we can pass it in as a variable as by name. So what I could just say here now is go button dot, uh, button up dot connect and then we'll pass in on button up, like so. And so you can see that you can create them either in line like this, or you can create them as variables like that, and now you can pass these in as functions. That's very, very handy. So you can also do, uh, again, functions as parameters. So I'm gonna go here and say function, and then I'll call with lambda, and then I'll go uh, my function to call. So we're passing a function as a parameter like so, and then we can go ahead and call that function, function to call dot call. So you can now pass functions as variables, and this is going to open up a whole lot of options. And then I can actually go ahead and do a lambda function in this. So now I can go call with lambda, and I can create my own lambda in line func, like so. Print this was passed in. 
So now we go ahead and run all that. My syntax is right now. All right, we should get the error gone. Okay, 13. Oh, colon. All right. And all gone. All right, we'll go ahead and run that. So stop, hammer time, run that out. So now you're going to see, click me. So you're going to see was passed in, press the button, sucker, and button was released. So this is the, the new fact that signals and callables are now first class variables, just like, you know, uh, strings and vars and, and ints and everything else. You can now pass them as functions, like you can see here. You can create them inline, like you can see here. This is going to make the code for handling quick and simple um, signals like this much, much cleaner. So that's one nice new feature that we've got going on in Godot 2.0. Uh, actually, I guess that's three new features. Uh, so we've got variable sorry um functions uh, signals are both first class function or first class variables now and um we have the new lambdas in place this is going to really change the way a lot of people code and definitely are nice additions all right moving on i'm just gonna go ahead we'll we'll stick here we'll do everything here in this one function or this one code file the next new thing here is sort of new and this is typed variables this is actually some pretty nice stuff so let's say here Inside of ready, I'm going to create a new variable and we're going to call this one uh, var meaning of life equals 42. So what we're doing here is we're creating a var of type 42. And the cool thing here is, and this is in uh, Godot 3.x, uh, we can now do typing. So basically we're going to say meaning of life is an int. So what we're doing here is we're giving a hint to the compiler, okay, this is an integer. So now if I come down here and I go, all right, meaning of life equals Bob, well, that doesn't work because this is now a type. It's not a complete variant. It knows what it's got to be. So it can do uh, compile time checks to make sure that your versions is correct. Now, again, this isn't new. What is new though, is this now because of the new compiler behind the scenes this makes things faster so if you give typed variables to the gdscript compiler gdscript knows how to deal with it and can can do some performance optimizations in terms of what kind of speed gains we can see uh, subscripts 5 to 7 percent faster operations 25 to 50 percent faster functions calls in built-in types 30 percent built-in types with pre-validated arguments 70 percent without 70 to 80 percent function calls in native classes 120 to 150 percent faster built-in function calls about 25 to 50 percent faster and iterations about 10 to 50 percent faster so you can definitely see improvements by using typed variables so again they are 100 percent optional but if you use typed variables your world is a better place now because you're going to get better performance as a result. Another thing that is new to GDScript 2, though, is we now have the typed array. So typed array, and the syntax is pretty straightforward. This follows Python, so we're going to create a type of array. Uh, array, and this is array of type string equals, uh, okay, I got to open brackets. Mike uh, is awesome. And so there you can see. Uh, you can now declare typed arrays like that. So now if I do something like typed array at 1 equals 42, it's going to fail out because that is a typed array. And the other advantage, once again, is if you use typed array, the compiler behind the scenes knows what you're doing and will make the results faster. This is definitely a nice thing. Another thing that we've got going on is you now have the ability, and this we saw this in the performance ramifications. This one is pretty big. My function with explicit, explicit explicit type is now I can do and have a parameter. So my param, we can specify the types of parameters. So that means that this function, my params, whatever you pass in, you can only pass in an int. So if I try to do um, my param equals Doug, it's going to fail. And on top of that, it is going to uh, be faster because you provided the type. So if you've got a variable, if you've got a function that takes very specific variable types, the new typed functions can uh, be defined like so, and you will get a performance increase as a result. So the summary here is, um, you know, this isn't necessarily new in terms of type functions, but the performance optimizations from them and typed arrays, those are both new features. And then we're going to go on to the final set of features now. So I'm going to erase all of this again. 
And this one is probably where it's going to get a little bit on the most um, uh, controversial side, if anything, or the, probably the one that might be the most polarizing is a number of keywords have been made annotations. So for example, before, if we exported a variable out, we would say export uh, var or whatever. Now that is an annotation. An annotation starts with at. Uh, so I say export, for example, and you can see we got a number of different exports there. We'll go look at those in a second. Uh, but for example, I can go meaning of life equals 42. So there we've got, we can use these new uh, annotations to do, it. a lot of keywords went away and they're now replaced with annotations. And annotations give us a couple of neat values. We're going to see those, in, a couple of them in action, but you're going to see this one. Uh, okay, I think I need to do a save. We'll save that. Flip back over here. Uh, node. All right, where's my, where's my export? Where's my export? And I go back here one second. Oh, I'm an idiot. Okay, so I got to make that a valid function call. All right, so we'll get rid of our errors. Everything should work fine. I'll go back over here to the 2D view, and there you will see our export. So this used to be done via keywords. Now it is done via annotations. And a lot of things were converted to this system. So it used to have the uh, master kind of keywords for networking, that kind of stuff. Uh, they are on annotations as well. Also, uh, ready functions. So these were called uh, after the scene was uh, set up and ready to go. It's a little bit of code you could call inline. Well, those are, in for example, I could come in here using annotations and I can say et on ready, like so. And then let's do var player operating system equals print and then os.get name, like so. So you can do that, and now when this code runs, let's go ahead and run that. Bum, 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 bum. And you're gonna notice down here, Windows. All right, cool. So that is, this is all functionality that used to be done using dedicated keywords, and now you're using uh, these attributes. Now there's a cool, couple cool things about attributes that weren't available before. So for example, I can chain attributes together. So we do this, now I head on over here, and you're gonna see, you now have another value exported. That's pretty cool. So you can um, now have multiple attributes on the same thing. Uh, and one other thing to look at here is for the export. So say on export, uh, so now you see there's a number of different ones. So I can specify what kind of an export this is. So for example, uh, I could say on export, um, uh, what am I gonna do an example? A file, all right. Export file. Actually, no, let's do it on new. This is actually a completely new feature functionality, so let's do that instead. So I can say, all right, so we're gonna do export underscore it in num, and we can give it the possible values. So we got Bob and we got Doug, like so. Uh, and then we'll call that choice is. So now I'm gonna go ahead and save that. We'll head back on over here. So you're going to see we now have uh, the ability to specify choices. Bob and Doug. So that's uh, the new export system. We've got the enums in place. That is a completely new option, but you've got a number of different export values you could set up so you can give hints. So if it was a file, like it's a file, so it knows to load the correct uh, drop down or choice here. So in this case, you see it uses a number, so you've got a selector. In this case, it's a string, so you're just getting its null terminated out right there. And here we've got an enum with a single option pick going on there. And then the other thing that we've got here is um, the uh, master remote uh, sync. All of those things have been moved into an in as well. So if you've got a sync, if you've got uh, a uh, multiplayer setup going on, you could do uh, remote funk on server uh, ready, for example. So, and then you just say print server is ready like that. And we could potentially chain a number of these things together. Uh, I think it's at sync is the other one. Oh, at puppet. Yeah, so like so. So you can chain a number of attributes together, even if they make absolutely no sense to be chained together, uh, that is the case. So these things, a lot of these things used to be um, Keywords, now they've been moved out. The same way they've also switched out setters. Uh, so now you have uh, properties in place to kind of make some of the get and set code that you had to write before uh, kind of ugly. Uh, so again, this one might be a little bit more uh, controversial in a way. It's just kind of a different way of doing things, but this is going to break a lot of code, especially this one. OnReady is used 
everywhere. So moving it from a keyword to an attribute is definitely going to break a lot of existing code. Uh, but that is the new approach they are taking. And uh, yeah, that's kind of it. So we've got uh, new typing, we've got delegates, lambda functions, functions as first class citizens, uh, attributes that you're seeing like here. Um, and that's probably the highlights of what's coming in GDScript. The big one I like though is that typed scripts are being used by the compiler to make the results of GDScript faster. So that means you won't have to necessarily jump into another uh, programming language to get better performance out. All you do is give it some type information and the compiler has more to work with and it can optimize the results. That is definitely an improvement in GDScript 4. But let me know what you think. Is there anything here that you're really excited about? Um, let me know comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.